Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here with Married to Medicine Season 7 Reunion Part 1. Okay, let me say this. They put a lot of time and effort into the set. Um, it's supposed to be like a replica of Toya's closet. Obviously, it's way wider than Toya's closet is because it's a stage. But um, the basic premise is supposed to be Toya's closet. To me, it looks like a store, um, a boutique. I guess that is the look that uh, everyone's going for. Um, okay, so you guys already know how I feel about that whole Toya's house situation. Like, anyway, so we're going to talk about the ladies' looks one by one. We're going to talk about um, some things that popped off in this episode. We are not going verbatim because I'm going to tell you there was a Tasmanian devil that somebody gave two shots of Hennessy and, and slapped them on they drunk behind and let them run amok all up and through this reunion. And that was your girl, Heavenly. Heavenly's a Tasmanian devil. It was on several occasions during this first and then the second episode of this reunion where Andy got frustrated and basically had to tell Heavenly to shut up. Just be quiet okay because she was here to 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 slang and bang on behalf of jackie who didn't need it and on behalf of quad who didn't need it at all at all and be as intrusive and inappropriate as she possibly can okay so she is the tasmanian devil of not only this season but for sure this reunion she is the tasmanian devil it would have been so nice so nice if she could have lost her voice just for the reunion just for the reunion if we could have just had just just a little mute Let's talk about it. We start with Quad, living single with Quad. And we just go through, Quad is now divorced. And she is, you know, trying to find her footing out there as a newly single woman. She's got her maiden name back. So I guess she's back to being Quad Webb or Quad Lunsford. I think her name is Quad Lunsford Webb. So I think she's back to being Quad Lunsford, which is not a bad name. I mean, she don't need the web. So, um, she had on like this, um, this long jacket, the long, the jacket was long to the floor. She's not a very tall woman. Jacket was long to the floor and she had this, um, pants set on. The top was kind of sheer. It was a bodice. We had, we had several bodices, um, in this, in this reunion, um, it was a body. Y'all know Quad's got a, a phenomenal body. She stays in really good physical condition. So um, she looks good. It was just, it to me, it was a nice suit. It was way too long. It was way, way too long. The coat was too long. The pantsuit was too long. Now she had on um, some very nice YSL pumps. But they were nothing special. They didn't need to be anything special because they were not going to be seen. They were just there to give her a little bit of height. Um, the, the pants were so long, they kind of looked like a dress almost. Like it was looked like she had a dress and a coat dress on. That bodice was the nicest part of it. I wouldn't have mind seeing her with a much shorter number with that bodice. I would not have mind seeing her with that same outfit on but a pencil pant, a all leather pencil pant, that would have been beautiful. And just some really, really sparkly, beautiful accoutrements to just break up some of that, that black, that coat could have been a little bit shorter and sassier. She's not a very tall girl. It just could have been done nicer. And it just, in an attempt to look a little bit more formal, um, 
it just kind of swallowed her up. I thought her makeup was really pretty. I personally am over the straight weave with the part down the center. I see it everywhere, Instagram, all of that. I would love to see our ladies with more texture. I would love to see more texture. Not structure, Contessa. Not structure, texture. <laughs> Just can we please get just a little bit more texture? I just, I get so sick and tired of all these Anglo-Saxon hairstyles. It just, it drives me bananas. Like I, I, I just, I, y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying. Y'all know what I'm saying? Something so beautiful about us when we let our skin, our melanin pop, the texture of our hair, just beautifully done. Like it could have been done. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Anyway, I'm I'm getting, let me get off, off my soapbox. So, like I said, she looked pretty. It's clear to me that Quad is working on her brand. She has, um, you know, kind of tried to build something with herself with this Cooking with Miss Quad, which I enjoy the book. I do think her recipes have way, way too many ingredients in them. Um, but that's just me. Um... You know, she had her puppies and pooch thing. Now she's doing sister circle. And she, you can tell she's working on her brand. You can tell it comes across in her conversation and just the way she tries to handle herself. At the same time, it does look like she thinks she's better than everyone else. She somehow floats above. But Quad has a lot to prove, not only to others, but to herself. I do like the way she handled herself with um, respect to the fact that they asked her about Greg and is he dating? And um, Simone knew a lot about it because apparently Simone's husband, Cecil, is still close with Greg. They've gone out with Greg and his new girlfriend. She's very pretty, Simone said. She, I think, quite handled it beautiful. Well, she ought to be pretty. His wife was beautiful, so why would he step down? You know, and do you think that Greg is dating? Well, he was dating while we was married, so I wouldn't be surprised that he's dating outside of marriage. It wasn't harsh and everything. She was just being kind of matter of fact. Quad just don't have it in her for Greg, point blank, period. So when they get to the men's scene, which is in the second reunion, and she kind of has second part of the reunion, and she kind of has this moment where she forces these tears, and then she has to turn. She has to turn because she's not really crying, but it seems appropriate. It goes with her brand. It goes with her brand. She can't look like, I do not care what that little ninja do. Or who he do it with because he wasn't giving your girl what she needed financially or um, as it pertains to anything else. So she not, but she can't come across that way. She can't really come across that way because that does not suit her brand. Even with her conversation about um, the Mariah situation. But what I did was I watched the whole thing, the whole two hours. So I had to go back and watch it a second time to even know when... The second hour came on, but let's just stay in this first hour. Of course, they talked to Quad about, um, not Quad, they talked to Toya. I think Toya had the best hair of everyone. Her hair, her face makeup. Now, Quad's makeup was pretty too, but Toya's face makeup and that hair, all of that texture, you know, those curls, those beautiful curls, that's our hair. That's our hair. That's what our hair looks like. I enjoyed that on her. She gave me a real retro look. That dress, on the other hand, looked like a nightgown. I did not care for it. And I'm going to tell you something. Quad, me and Toya, your body needs a little bit more structure. To me, she could have used a bit of peplum, something to just cover just this just to shade over that her midsection area. It's kind of ill fitting there. And she could have used a nice peplum number there. Um and, and just giving us a little bit more glam to go with the hair. The hair was very, very glam. The makeup was beautiful. Um that was just my whole situation. So they went over the house, of course, and the fact that she had a housewarming and it wasn't inside the actual house. They went over the fact that she had had a miscarriage 
and all of this stuff. And, you know, it was like this moment in between here and there, people talking, quad talking. Tell we have Heavenly jumping in. Toya Big Bird and stole her house, stole for her house to get her house. And I'm happy for it, but it's the truth and everybody knows it. I just, I was just like, why won't somebody slap a muzzle on her? Why was she sitting next to Andy? Like her volume alone says that she needs to be talking from the audience. Like I just don't care for her energy at all. I don't think she brings anything to this cast except um, dissension. I think she, uh, anyway. So that was whole the whole Toya situation. Andy asked Toya uh, a question and Heavenly just basically took over. She just took over the question. And, and it was just about Heavenly shading her house and so on and so forth. She also talked to, they also talked to Contessa about it. And Contessa was like, other people had the same conversations about her house. You know, it was just me. They wish I agree with that. At the same time, Contessa has turned out to be kind of like, um, she's kind of like a heckler. You know, she doesn't really participate a lot in the conversations. But she heckles from the sidelines. You know, she gives the gestures. Mm. I think what she's saying is, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's just like, she's the heckler. She is the heckler. Um, Contessa had on a silver number. And I guess it was supposed to be a little bit more Grecian. Um, it was kind of wrapped and the the wraps were twisted around it was it it just looked cheap it looked cheap that's just my opinion contessa looked cheap she looked like a 1980 first lady at revival you know what i'm saying <clears throat> like the church had a ball she had these large billowy curls that were structured kind of like a mohawk and they looked like she had pearls in them y'all remember we used to put pearls in our tucks and our french rolls y'all remember that oh yeah it's very sanctified <coughs> it's very very sanctified so she had kind of like a modification of that i saw when she got up that the back wasn't even soft that they had given her a soft bunch of hair to go here it would have balanced out some of that structure that was on top. And then she had one little curl that had flipped loose that was just bouncing on one side. It's just like Contessa. She had eyelashes on the top and the bottom, those spider eyes. I cannot stand it. I cannot stand it. It's too much. And let me just say this. Some of this makeup was a little draggy, was a little draggy. You guys need to get y'all some, some makeup artists that know how to soften a woman's face. None of these girls are young. None of these girls are teeny boppers. And while they don't have horrible skin, they do have some areas that need to be softened. Contessa's a big girl. Um, she kind of looked like a, a giant, uh, you know... Madam doll, like no, 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 that wasn't her. Mariah was getting giving me Madam from from um from Solid Gold. But anyway, she had one of the largest storylines. They talked about it very little. I don't know if they're just waiting to bring Scott out to talk about it a little bit more. But for them not to give her a moment to talk about anything other than the mommy party, the party, the, the mommy feels guilty party where she threw her kids a carnival um, was odd to me. It was just odd to me because it, it was a part of the season from the beginning of the season. So why weren't we talking to Contessa about it as a main cast member? I just didn't get that. I didn't get that. And we, we went through two episodes and we really didn't talk about it. We talked about her throwing that party and that was it. I just was like, okay.
but it's all about the salacious. What she and Scott was going through was like a real type situation in their relationship. And apparently it wasn't exciting as Simone and Cecil made theirs. Um, it wasn't as salacious as Jackie and Curtis. So I don't know. Maybe that's why they didn't talk about it. But I, I didn't care for Contessa's makeup. I didn't care for her hair. I didn't care for her outfit. I think she looked cheap. I think she looked dated. Um, and at this point, it feels like she's doing it on purpose. It feels like somebody is sabotaging her look to me. Um, we get to see Simone. Simone, um, you know, if you if your doctor had to be to worked all day, but then had to be a formal event that night, that's that's what she would have ran and put home on home and put on a, a little pantsuit. She had a little bodice. They tried to give her a little after five sexiness. Um, that hair that she had, it was stiff. It didn't have any movement to it whatsoever. I didn't understand that. I, like I said, the ladies could have used a little softening. I did like the hair color. I did like her makeup. Um, Mariah, Mariah had on all pink. And she had pink eyeliner on. She was giving me a lot of drag. Um, Mariah has a way of holding her face and her mouth. The way she looks from the side sometimes. She just can look real draggy. And and to me, a lot of times she looks like Madam. Y'all remember Madam from Solid Go? <laughs> the, the, the puppet. Sometimes she can look kind of like Madam. Um, I didn't understand that pink eyeliner. It was such a distraction. Again, I felt like it was very, very drag. Um, I can't take those that straight hair with the that part down the center, you know, and the um the scalp is is colored to match your face, you know. It's 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 just the hair is. I I just I just didn't care for it. I just I didn't care for. The dress looked beautiful on her. It, it to me, it's just her makeup, the look. That stupid highlighter on her cheeks. I was just like, why do you have it? And that was the first. The minute I saw it, I was like, why is that bothering me? Because it looked like Madam. It does. It looks like Madam. It looks so draggy. That highlighter on both of her cheeks, it made her look so plastic, so fake. I just could not stand it. I was like, she is too made up. She has too much makeup on her face. And the ladies are on camera. The ladies are on TV. It's supposed to pop, but sis, unacceptable. Unacceptable. They bring Buffy out. This is Buffy's first reunion, of course. First reunions, everybody overdoes it. It must be a prerequisite. She had on these ridiculous feathers that were laying all over her chest and on her mouth. And Mariah kept picking them off. Her makeup was beautiful. I thought her hair was beautiful. Um, that friggin' bodice that she had on where all her giant breasts were just sitting up right up here. And then pieces of the bodice, because it was structured, was kind of digging into the meat of her breasts. It just made her look fatter. It just made her look fatter. She looked like um what was the what was the show where the lady was a a, a madam of a whore house? <laughs> oh, oh, we diamond Zara girl. It wasn't that May West. That's what she looked like. She looked like a a black May West. I was like, give her a little hat, baby, and let her come down some stairs singing da 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 da. -da. <laughs> you know, just the ridiculous, over-the-top, boobity 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 boob. Okay. That tight bodice digging in different places on her breast. And her breast was just up there like a cake that didn't quite set in the oven. You know how it's kind of still gelatinous in the center. That's kind of what it looked like. It was just... Uh, just look. <sighs> and all those stupid feathers. She just looked fatter. She just looked fatter. If she had gotten just a little bit more structured outfit, something where she just kind of, you know, just a looked a little bit more, a little less like an overdressed kid 
or um, she was just trying too hard. Like I said, it may be a prerequisite. Um, heavenly makeup was pretty. Again, that those that hair where your wig is parted down the center. Like I'm over it. I would love to see a side swoop from someone, anyone, please. It was just horrible. Um, I didn't care for um, the dress that she had on. It was nice for what it was. Heavenly just... A beautiful dress, if you put it on heavenly, it's just ruined. They were talking about she had lost a little bit of weight. It's just the way she sits. It's the way she carries herself. The The dress will never speak for her. Her mouth will always be going. Always be going. She had like a kind of a, like a body wave to it. It was what it was. Jackie, y'all know I say this every year. Jackie looks so poorly to me. She looked almost small sitting next to Heavenly. She looked as though she was bent. She had on a suit. It was very, very matronly what she had on it. It looked like it had lace sleeves. It looked like it had some other lace detailing because it was all black. And that black hair with that bang and that pony. Like I was just like, why y'all letting these people, these stylists do this? Why? Why? Heavenly sitting there with her her legs out straight and her ankles crossed. That's the lazy girl sit. You don't sit like that. If you're going to be on camera, you need to be mindful. You need to take them, bring them legs in, tuck them to the side, and then cross your ankles. But you don't sit with your legs straight out and your ankles crossed. That is, I have eat, been at church all day. I ate everything I could eat, and now I'm about to take me a light nap. That's what that looked like. While we at it, Simone kind of looked like she needed a nap too. She sat there the whole time kind of with her, both her hands in between her thighs. Like she might've been cold and sleepy. It was just, it was just, it was just, I don't know. The color scheme, the ladies just were not set up beautifully in my opinion. Most of the makeup was nice, but at the same time, it wasn't special. We talked about Toya and the miscarriage. We got to, um... Um, talk about how um, Buffy and Jackie kind of fell out the whole situation. Jackie gave Buffy a very, very sincere apology. And then she had this moment where she's telling Buffy that if she got an opportunity, God gave her the opportunity to have a child, she would give it to Buffy. I, you know, everybody was like, whoa, wow, whoa. It's martyrdom. It's, it's a bit of martyrdom. It is. I'm just being honest. It's a bit of martyrdom. Her saying that she would step away if she thought that any of the relationship would, would be ruined. It's a bit of martyrdom to me. We got to see. We got to see a little bit of who Jackie really, really is. The nastier side of Jackie. Um, even though I do think her apology was sincere to a certain degree. We also get to see why Jackie and Heavenly have become really close because the nastiness that heavenly is Jackie is is inside somewhere but she suppresses it a little bit of it is inside of her and she finds it attractive from heavenly she finds the fact that heavenly has found a way to say whatever however whenever although Jackie may be thinking it she would never say it because of her brand Okay, but she can now say some of those things or co-sign some of those things or commiserate about some of those things because Heavenly is the voice of that little bitty part of her. Is the nasty voice that Jackie, uh, because of professional reasons, I think doesn't do. I do, but I think I think that was a little bit of martyrdom. Um, I don't believe any piece of it. I don't believe she would give that opportunity. Um, I think it was real telling that all the ladies after she said and i'll deliver your baby for you and um both toya after after buffy said i got a doctor and i'm happy with them both toya and simone second those emotions <laughs> so you know she got a doctor she don't need a doctor and so this is how the first um the first part of the reunion ends they break for lunch and uh, Jackie goes up to talk with Buffy and just kind of reiterate and re-apologize and just kind of reaffirm. Now, her Jackie uh, uh, Buffy says she wanted them to get together and have lunch outside of the group and, of course, outside of Heavenly. <laughs> That's what.
what she means without Heavenly being there. Because Jackie, this is at the break. She goes up, she talks to Buffy, and Heavenly is right there. She is, she is right there. Jackie can't, she can barely take up for herself without Heavenly jumping in. She Heavenly tries to move Andy on. We can all move on from it and not bring it up again. Like I said, he shushes her several times through both of these episodes. We get to see where... Um, there was some conversation about the comment that she made about common, which I still stand by is the truth. I feel like it's the truth to me. That's just an opinion. It's all alleged. But at the same time, I feel like it's the truth because I saw an interview that Quad did recently where she's after this episode aired where she said she she took heavenly to task about it and she just let her know we can't be friends if this is how you're going to act if this is how you're going to do that was inappropriate right at the same time at the reunion it was like oh when i heard that i just want to clear that up i just want to clear that up she did not take heavenly to task on stage at that reunion about a lot of the stuff that heavenly was saying but she cannot she can't go full-fledged at Heavenly because, like I said, Heavenly is like a Tasmanian devil. She's the squeakiest wheel around. She knows that some of the things she has shared and she has done with Heavenly, Heavenly is going to regurgitate because that's who she is. She needs to keep Heavenly close and cool and collected because she don't need Heavenly and Mariah at her throat. That's the last thing she needs. I think she has a little fear of Heavenly. I do. I think she's been made to feel comfortable and she's probably said some things and done some things traveling and moving around with Heavenly and now Heavenly feels comfortable to say some things and Quad is at a position now where because of those things, she doesn't feel at liberty to full on, full on take Heavenly to task for what she said. The way she said it, every time I hear it, it sounds like the truth. Oh, I'm sorry. Was I not supposed to repeat that? What you mean repeat it? You would have had to have heard it the first time in order for you to be repeating it now. It's not true. They're doing the great cover up. I don't, I believe something did happen. And that's just my opinion on it. The fact that Quad is not really fully taking her to task publicly, publicly, now, we're going to watch her try to get all the way, all the way to it with Mariah. And Mariah's handling her weird right now, but that's our number two, okay? So, the episode ends. We get ready to see um, the second part coming up next. I will be back. You guys tell me what y'all think about this first part. What do y'all think about the looks? Do y'all see what I'm saying about texture? Do y'all more importantly see what I'm saying about each of the girls? How... They have sort of come to this place where there is this alliance between Mariah and Toya. She doesn't really shade Toya too tough. Um, we see where Simone has kind of drawn a line in the sand with, with Heavenly. And with Quad, she doesn't mind. She's like, okay, we cool if you want to be cool. But if you don't want to be cool, you know... It's a little odd. And why are the ladies, including Toya, because Toya is super duper rah-rah. And we have Contessa the heckler who's co-signing on Heavenly too. Like, you guys really did kick Mariah out season one, season two. Y'all kicked Mariah out and she's executive producer. Y'all kicked her out altogether for less. Y'all got Heavenly running around here calling Buffy a fat A. On TV, which she is, but that's not the point. <laughs> not the point. You got her dragging Simone for filth. You got her talking about Toya Big Bard and stole your booty ain't real, and you slept with Common with Quad. I, I, y'all letting her run them up, but because they so divided, see, they stood united to get rid of Mariah. They real divided. Now, so the girls that want Heavenly gone, it's equal to the girls that don't mind Heavenly being there. And I want to know what y'all think about that. Y'all know Heavenly got a show where she reviewed. I've never seen it. I've never seen any of her shows. But, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, she she is, she is she's, she's a Tasmanian devil. And she ruled this reunion the first two episodes she ran them she ran them she ran them hard she exhausted everybody it was it was it was 
disgusting to watch in my opinion so y'all tell me what y'all think about that put it down below and until next time honeybees i love